Ed? Uh, well, uh, why don't you uh, throw a left, Nick? Now, as you notice, I not only blocked you, but I'm going right to the eye. And if you shot a right... Ah. Now, you... now, very slowly, what he did was this. First with the left, I came in. He's gouging out my eyes. Then I'm shooting the right. He's breaking my wrist, breaking my neck, tearing out my eyes, busting me in the stomach and the solar plexus, and I've had it. But well, Nick, I think we should review what we had last week. Uh... Well, for instance, what would you do for a handshake that was turned into a hammerlock? Well, first I'd step back here, take off your head, break your elbow, step back here, and knock off your head, and maybe finish it with a kick. All right, that's good. Now... Uh... What about a lapel grab? First, I step back here, straighten out your arm, break your elbow, and chop you in the neck. I think you you remember your lesson fairly well. Hmm. That was a first-rate lesson, but I have a question to pose to you. Suppose you're attacked by three or perhaps four or five men who are attacking you as, uh, perhaps there's a man on either side of me, one in the middle and one on the other side of Ed. What would you do then? Uh, well, let me see. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd take out the center guy first, I think, get him out, and then work from the left to right. What about that, Ed? Well, actually, uh, you're asking uh, to make something that he hasn't already had. That's right. I haven't had that lesson yet. But I disagree with Nick, simply because I would never work up the middle unless the middle man was spearheading the group. I would always work clockwise or counterclockwise around the group. Why is that? Well, simply because uh, I'd be using one man as a blockade throughout my exercise. For instance, if you were attacking, I'd hit, kick. Now, in this position, you see, mm -hmm. Joe would have to get to me. They ought to come around you, or if your other opponents were around this area, well, they'd have to go around you to get to me. So I would uh, think that would be the most logical thing to you do. You know, so I think Ed's right, Joe. No argument. <laughs> no argument. No argument. Well, I was uh, wrong on that one, but uh, Ed, let me see. Let me see if I uh, do the uh, variation right of uh, when uh, someone throws a uh, punch at me. Excuse me a second, Joe. Step to the side, into the gut, the kidney, neck. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, I, I, what, and the other one you showed me, the variation on that. Step to the side, and with the middle finger... How under... about using the elbow? The elbow in there, too? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <You're... laughs> Listen, uh, let me ask you, I think the uh, people out there would probably be interested to know if... Um, I'm much smaller than you. I, you probably weigh about 180 pounds. I weigh 150 pounds. Are my punches or blow, blows any uh, stronger? Uh, do I have... Uh, do you have any more power than I do? Uh, well, I mean, in other words, will my effect be as great? Uh, power doesn't really, I mean, power definitely is, a, is a, an asset. But in our case, supposing now I pick the rib cage, if I was to hit you with this elbow, Nick, I'd certainly get a lot of force out of it, say if it was 180, as opposed to your 80. But if it only takes 40 to do it... 40 does the job, doesn't matter if you weigh uh, 85 pounds. That's correct. Say, uh, Joe, Bring in that board over here. Okay, what's next? This is the part of the karate show that almost all of you expect to happen when someone's going to break a board or a brick. And the fact of the matter is, however, that board breaking and brick breaking is part of karate only for development of hands, arms, and elbows, and feet. But every blow that's thrown in karate, like you've seen today, is pulled when we're practicing it. But a blow such as the one that Nick threw to Ed's rib cage not long ago with his elbow was strong enough to collapse his rib cage. Now this is a one inch thick piece of pine. It's solid all the way through and Nick is going to show you now what he can do to this one inch thick of pine with just his elbow and you have an idea then of the impact that one of those blows has. Oh. Yeah. 
So that was only 40. We busted it with 40, and you would have busted it with 180. That's correct. So what's the difference? But 40 did the you job. Did right. Well, as for me, when the time comes to break boards at my house, I use an axe. <laughs> well, Nick Adams, thanks for letting us come to your karate lesson, and thanks to you too, Ed Parker, for a very revealing demonstration. Of